got it. Got what? My period. When I read the script, I immediately thought that Margaret's life was so similar to mine. I was kind of the oddball. I was always reading. I really loved how Kelly was so truthful and so honest with everything that happens. I'd had an absolutely joyous time playing with Abby. I trust her implicitly. She has infallible instincts. When I heard that Rachel McAdams and Kathy Bates were gonna be in this movie, I was literally freaking out. I was like, I'm gonna be in a movie with these people. You bring in Rachel and the Kathy Bates of it all. To life. <laughs> that experience that kind of puts it all together with Benny and it just works. What Judy Bloom allowed and what Kelly Craig created is taboo and rebellious in the best spirit of rebellion. Menstruation. A lot of people don't talk about these subjects, and I think it's a real lesson for girls. This is how they work. So you just pull I know how to do it. I've been practicing in my room for two months. <laughs> Having spent time with Kathy, she expressed the responsibility she feels to making Judy proud and doing right by her. And I agree. I think we all feel that way. We all want to make Judy proud. All right, there you go. It's me, Margaret. I've never been so jealous in my entire life, and I hate myself for being jealous. Let me just be normal and regular like everybody else. Just please, 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 please. After I made The Edge of Seventeen, I was thinking about what to do next, and I thought I'd love to reach out to Judy Bloom and make Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret. What I remember most is Kelly and I saying, let's talk to Judy. And what I wanted to do was talk about the realities of, how, of what happens when you adapt a movie and be honest about it. You know, that was my whole thing. And so we flew out to her home in Key West and sat in her living room and just pitched our hearts out for a few hours. And then we all looked at each other. And then her husband, George, who had been monitoring the whole conversation from over there, said, we're doing this, aren't we? And we all hugged, and that's how it started. Oh, my God, I love it. That was so great. She resisted so many people coming to her. and She loved Edge of Seventeen, and I think that, with the combination of Jim, made her feel like she'd be in good hands and our wanting to make it right. I think she recognized that. Almost every woman you talk to of a certain age has either read the book or heard about the book, and a lot of mothers want to share it with their younger, growing daughters. It feels like people kind of certainly respond to the book that way, and that's definitely what we want for the movie as well. Kelly's done extraordinary work with the sense of mission, the passion, the kindliness she brought to the whole thing, which was the understanding of the kids in this. The best movies are a combination of a great script and the perfect cast. I feel like that's what we achieved. For this film especially, you know, it's so character-driven. The cast is everything. We would kind of see who we liked, and then we would send it to Judy, and luckily we were all really on the same page. And obviously, Margaret, she's a seminal character in literature, and we weren't going to make the movie unless we got the right Margaret, obviously. We saw hundreds, if not thousands, of girls audition for Margaret. And the truth was, Abby walked in and was so instantly it. She just made us laugh. She made us cry. Are you there, God? It's me, Margaret! I hate Phil Leroy. I hate him. I hate Laura Danger, too. The great big chest. <laughs> a sweater! A sweater, for God's sakes! She has such depth. It's like you look inside her eyes and there is so much going on. It's just miles deep. I could really use some help. That was really important for Margaret because she's an internal character. She doesn't always say much. And so it was important to be able to read just so much through an expression. Whenever I was talking with Kelly, all of our conversations were always about who Margaret is as a person. She's just trying to fit in so much. Guys, this is Margaret, the one I was telling you about. Margaret, this is Janie. Hi, nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. And this is Gretchen. So, you're the fourth. Yeah. Set, ready, background, and action. Margaret and I are both goofy people at heart. <laughs> and we both are going through the same changes in our lives, and we both are just figuring ourselves out. Abby is extraordinary. At a certain point, you're just fascinated by her work. You're just fascinated by the intelligence 
Well, you always wonder about child actors, and I think Abby has that ability not to be scared with, like, the Kathy Bates of it all or with Rachel. She just plows in, and I think the other cast members feel her confidence. I mean, Abby just makes it all so easy. She really is Margaret. She's always inventing and creating and moving the character forward, and it's, it's quite amazing to watch for someone her age. You want to just sit for a minute? Rachel, she's such a sweet woman. It's been really amazing working with her. She's so focused. It's just really great to act around her. It's tiring trying so hard all the time, doesn't it? I mean, Rachel, we're like, uh, I mean, it would be a dream if we got her and we weren't sure, you know? The mom role is a little bit more in the movie than it is actually in the book. And the mother-daughter relationship is really important to the movie. And Rachel brought such humanity and you care about that mom. When we sent the script to Rachel, I wanted to be very clear with her that it was different from the book. And that in the film version, I wanted to really explore her journey as a mom in a much deeper way. We talked a lot about that and we just connected. I completely related on that level, too, as a working mother, as a mother that's constantly looking at herself as a parent and if she's doing it right. Mom? Mom? What is it? What's wrong? I, I, I caught my period. <gasps> I'm a woman! <laughs> Barb went to work when women weren't necessarily, and then she decides, oh, wait, I want to try it the other way. So she's kind of doing the reverse of what a lot of women were doing at that time. And the great irony is that Margaret is growing away from her now. <laughs> so it's coming to that realization that um, there's a lot of letting go that needs to happen and a lot of self-acceptance. Barb's a complicated role. She makes it look effortless. And she is effortless. Right on, All right, girls. here we go. She's a lovely, open, kind woman. There was a scene in which she tells Margaret why they have to go to New Jersey. And I was off screen, so I didn't want to look at her because I was in her eye line. But she did this scene so beautifully and so flawlessly that I couldn't look away. I'm not going to work anymore. Do you know what that means? That means that I I'm not going to be gone all the time, running from class to class. God, you know how bad I felt about that. And it just brought tears to my eyes. Okay, okay, I'm coming. <laughs> I saw this mother. I didn't see Rachel. I'm never gonna see you again. Oh, Jesus. <sighs> wow. So dramatic all the time. Kathy's so much fun to watch, and yet there's just such a fierce focus to her with the character. I imagine she does that with all of her characters, but it was great just to see how she works on this one. Shabbat Shalom. My granddaughter. My granddaughter. It's just been a really amazing experience working with Kathy Bates. Kathy came in and she is so committed. She builds a whole layered backstory for her character. You look gorgeous. So do you, your hair is red. Yes, everybody thinks I'm a showgirl. So when she comes to set, it's so much richer than even what you imagined. It's such a gift to work with her. What you want is the connection to the characters, the specificity of what they go through so that it connects to your audience in a very specific way. And through that connection comes empathy, which is really the goal, I think, of what we do as actors. Otherwise, it's just window dressing. Herb! Mom! Baby! Come give your mama a big hug. I've been a fan of Kathy's forever. She has this ability to just, again, dive into her character and just be present in the role. And she's amazing. Got it? Yeah, yeah. Ready, yeah, go. Oh! Oh, my God! Ooh. Are you okay? Ooh. Ah, just kidding. <laughs> Every time. If it's there, I'll take it. Working with Benny has been amazing. He's so focused and fun and always, always ready to improv and just be so free. It's interesting because when Kelly asked me to do it and Jim called me, I was like, oh, wow. I never, I, I didn't really, I guess, see myself. Even though I am a dad, I didn't really think of myself to play this kind of guy. All right, see you later. Bye. He's just a good guy. You know, he's, he, he cares. And Benny himself is just so natural, and it all just feels really easy. Dad! He just makes it so organic. That kind of connection that Rachel and Benny and I and, and Abby have all had together, that's so rare. And that's what we've had here. 
<laughs> and also, it was really fun to just work with people around my own age and have that kind of energy and excitement on set. So you're on set with a bunch of just kids. Some of them had never done anything before. They were all great. All of them were so amazingly well cast. I already know your name is Margaret and you're in sixth grade. The real estate agent sent out like a tiny flyer about you to the whole neighborhood. It was like this big and it had your picture. Nancy is fun. She's funny, but she just ha she's very harsh. She tells you how it is, no matter if it's a little bit rude, but it's kind of like an insult wrapped up in a little ribbon. She like tops it off like, oh, but it's okay. Oh, hello. Nancy Wheeler. I live in the bigger house up the street. Elle gave us a Nancy that is relatable, and you absolutely understand why you would be attracted to her for a friendship. Look how round they are. Mine just look like little wizard heads. <laughs> Gretchen's not afraid to like say things or or she doesn't care about what other people think. She really likes women marches. She's a budding feminist. And that's, I think, I see sometimes in myself. I never want to see anyone naked or have anyone see me naked. It's just gross. Come on. What about when you get married? Especially then. Janie is a sweet, loving, kind girl and kind of just sitting there waiting for her body to change and nothing's happening. Now if everybody's had enough to eat, we can start the games. The games? Norman Fisher is a bit of a nerd, although I've tried to work on it, so he's a little bit more confident. He thinks that he's pretty cool, so he tries to hang out with all the cool people. <laughs> this is a great party. Phillips, the cool heartthrob. The, the one all the girls want. I pick number 12. So... I think she's really important to Margaret's self journey to find like who she is and all of this, of course. But yeah, she's the cool heart for all. Well, when I got this role, I was super excited because I've never been to Charlotte before. So I was so pumped to come here, meet new people, you know. And Freddie thinks that he's a little bit tough. Who are you? Margaret, um, we moved in down the street. Oh, so you're the new people? Um, ask your dad if he wants me to cut the lawn. Five bucks an extra room, too. My name is Aiden Boytakison, and I play Moose. And I think Moose fits into the story because it shows kind of like Margaret while she's going through puberty. She also now develops these feelings towards Moose that she's kind of never felt before. <laughs> Evan, you yeah. stupid idiot! Oh, I'm sorry. You're such a great model, by the way. Evan is a kind of guy who thinks he's so cool. He must increase our bar. He thinks he rocks the ladies. But the thing is, he's definitely not as cool as he thinks he is. Good morning, class. <laughs> First, let me introduce myself. I am Mr. Benedict, and I'm your new sixth grade teacher. Every single one of my girlfriends <laughs> lit up. They're like, shut up, no way. I read this book. Mr. Benedict just wants the kids to have the best year possible. I think teaching has been such a seminal aspect of his life, and it's something that he carries through in the character, for sure. Is that our teacher? <laughs> no, that's Laura Danker. Stay away from her, OK? I think a lot of girls are isolated just, you know, automatically without really being given a chance. And that's what Laura's like. You think I don't know that all of you make fun of me like it's some kind of game? It's not Do you me. think I want to be the biggest kid in the class? The bottom line is that I think these actors actually uh, meld together well. One of the things that writer-directors have is you saw a movie in your head as you wrote it. And then as a director, if you're really good, it's a different movie. And Kelly Freeman Craig was great at guiding that process. She has very much what she wants and what she sees, and she communicates that really well. Very patient, very calm, but strong. It's a gift, definitely. Well, first of all, I'm obsessed with realism. I love the messy little details and imperfections, because that, to me, is life. And that, to me, makes me as a viewer feel less alone. Because I'm like, oh my, she's a mess, I'm a mess too. And there's some comfort and relief that I get in that when I watch films or television shows like that. Great, we got it. Well, Working with Kelly has just been a really inspiring experience because she's always so positive and uplifting. There we go. 
Great. She's so fun and she works with the kids so well. She says things and I totally understand immediately. It's incredible. Kelly said to me right from the beginning, how do you like to work? You know, I want to help you actualize that. And she would just shoot me little emails about Barb's clothes or maybe the body part that Barb is most connected to. That just fills the whole movie with her voice. Kelly has very specific ideas of how she wants those characters to come to life. Her scenes are twisty and turny and she wants to hit every note. And my joy of working with her has been refining all of that during the shooting of a particular scene. And action. And being free. Here we go. The process of creating the score was important because it connects you somehow. It connects you to the overall spirit of the film. It explores what happens emotionally throughout this coming of age story. The mood of the thing is uh, figuring out how to grow up. And there's, there's a lightness and there's a charm to it, which is the only way we, we could get through the sort of the, the trials and tribulations of womanhood and childhood. And of course, it's written by as a rather fabulous lady director. It takes you back to your own experiences. It evokes your own memories. They just nailed it. If I had to pick two get what some they are seeing, I would probably pick the carnival scene and the square dancing scene and probably this anatomy book scene. What book? You know. My dad's anatomy book that I told you about. It was pretty interesting, but we had a lot of fun. It looks like a thumb. What? <laughs> One of my favorite moments was definitely filming the girls doing, I must, I must, I must increase my bust, because that is such an iconic part of the book. So being there that day, seeing that was incredible. The other moment that I'll never forget was when we filmed Margaret practicing trying on a maxi pad. That was a moment because it's such a simple but intimate moment that half the population experiences, and yet it felt revolutionary. It felt like, I can't believe we're doing this. Are we allowed to do this, you know? And it was wild because so many of the people on the set, you know, of, of all our crew was like, I've, it's just wild to actually film something that we've all done, but, and yet we don't talk about it and we don't see. It feels like we sort of broke a taboo in a way, and it was funny, and we laughed. You're our baby. I had the best time tonight. This is one of the most wonderful experiences I've had. I'm 72 years old. There are times when you think, girl, I don't know how much longer you can keep this up. And so I am so grateful. You made this from scratch. Oh. To feel like I used to when I started out in this business. I did everything but shave the goat. I know it's not every day that you have the talent around like this. It's been great. I was really nervous to take this on because it's so iconic, and it's been everything I could have hoped for and more. I hope people feel good when they see the movie. Life is a little <laughs> bit strange, and that's all right. When you do grow, it'll grow with you. There can be some laughter attached to the awkwardness of being a person <laughs> at any age. People will see themselves in at least one of these characters because everybody has a Nancy, everybody has a Margaret, everybody has a Laura. It's, I think, the most important film I've worked on. And I just feel so proud of it. It's a picture that will never be out of time because it is so out of time in such a wonderful way. And I think that's what the story kind of really gets at because it is such a timeless kind of thing that will happen to everybody. And, you know, you get through it. <laughs> That's kind of what this film's saying. You're gonna get through it, and you're gonna be stronger. It's okay to be you, and you are enough, and just love yourself, and people need to respect you as you are. I hope this film will help young women feel better about their bodies. I want them to take Margaret's integrity with them, and Margaret's courage to question things, to think for herself, and to stand up for herself. Are you Zarek God?
It's me. Margaret. I didn't know what I was doing when I wrote Are You There, God Is Me, Margaret. I just knew that for the first time, I wanted to really tell the truth, my truth. I had published two books, but neither one of those books came from deep inside. And I just let go. I just knew Margaret, and I let her out. We're moving today. I'm so scared, God. I've never lived anywhere but here. Suppose I hate my new school. Suppose everybody there hates me. Please help me, God. Don't let New Jersey be too horrible. Judy Bloom, so many of her books made people feel normal. When I talk to women who read the books, they clutch their hearts and they're just like, oh my God, I love her books. She spoke to me and she saw me and made me feel less alone. Judy Bloom, she's absolutely a phenomenal author. The story she tells can be told today, it could be told 20 years ago, it could be told 20 years from now. They're just timeless stories. Judy Bloom is like my literary first love. I grew up reading every single book of hers. And Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret. It's her crown jewel. You look good. <laughs> Margaret is really about just finding yourself and finding your voice and just figuring everything out from religion to boys to periods to all the changes that everybody in the entire world goes through. And that's what connects us. Hello, girl. I am here to speak to you today about your changing bodies. Oh, wow, look at you. I was growing up in the 50s. I wrote the book and I said it in 1970, but a lot of the feelings, of course, came out of my own memories. I mean, we were doing those exercises. I must, I must, I must increase my body. We must, we must, we must, we must increase our body. I say it worked better for some people than others. Didn't work for me, I'm still waiting. But imagine if you didn't have a group of friends to talk to about these issues, and you didn't have an adult, and you were alone with it, and not knowing that this is natural and normal. I say to parents, this is gonna happen to your kids, whether you want it to or not. So you might as well talk to them about it. She got her period, sweetie. What's her first time? She's just a little scared. The book was written in 1970, but the themes in the book are timeless. I think it was easier for kids to associate themselves with this book because they can relate to it better than a science book. It's just stating facts. This book put a character behind it. Even though it was kind of frowned upon, it's a powerful book. It's important to note that this book was banned. I never thought, was this controversial? Was this something that I shouldn't do? Was I going to be allowed to do it? I just did it. Judy Bloom brought America permission to say the word period, permission to talk about a pad. No one was saying that before she wrote the book. Judy Bloom hits a lot of things head on. It's weird that it's still weird to talk about a period. You know, it's like more than half the population goes through it, and yet it's like this taboo thing and I felt something coming out of me. So I went to the bathroom, pulled down my pants, and that's when I saw the blood. That's the whole thing? I told you everything. No, there has to be something more. My sister said that it kind of has a smell, but I haven't noticed that yet. A smell? Like what? She said it kind of smells like the monkey bars. The monkey bars? Yeah. Ugh. Billy Mark? I've been very protective of the book for all these years, 50 years. I think I got a bad rap in Hollywood about, no, don't go to her, she won't sell her stuff. She won't let us do anything. But it wasn't true, but it was true of Margaret. Judy Bloom's biggest fear was that somebody would sanitize it. They'd make it too soft and cutesy and they'd file off all the edges. And what she's so great at and what she's known for is really telling the truth with all the little messy details. Are you there, God? It's me, Margaret, again. Maybe it is time for things to be happening around here. I got an email from Kelly. She had done a movie 
that I had actually seen and loved called The Edge of Seventeen. And I thought, I love that movie. And she told me that her mentor was James L. Brooks. And it's like, wait, what? This is too good to be true. And I already knew that this was gonna happen. I just felt that this was meant to be. <laughs> this is arguably Judy's legacy piece and our need to do right by her almost makes you stagger. It's on all our minds. You know, people ask me, well, how did you decide who to give it to? And I think it's just a question of trust. And action! That whole feeling when I came to the set for the first time, everyone gave me this huge welcome. <laughs> it was one of those moments that you remember and really, you know, love it. I mean, everyone recognizes her. She's like kind of a little rock star. And then she engages with them. And it's just an amazing thing how much she has meant to people. Watching her watch her book come to life and to be a part of that, it was so surreal. And she's the loveliest lady. I felt very honored to be a part of this for that reason. How's that feel? I cannot wait to take it off. Welcome to womanhood. What? Judy Bloom allowed and what Kelly Craig created is awkward is beautiful. The coming in age aspects of the story really touch home, really give you that perspective of what you have to go through growing up. No matter what race, color, sex, doesn't matter. Her stories are universal. I think it's a film we need for right now. It's about family. It's about growing up. It's about getting back to basic values standing on our own, being individuals, entering into life with confidence. It gives me great pleasure to have been a part of it. The people who grew up with the book, they're gonna see this story that's been in their heads all this time, and so I'm hoping that they will see it and they'll say, yeah, yeah, that's how it was. That's how I felt when I read the book. So funny. And they'll laugh and they'll cry and that they'll take away with it that same feeling that they had. Are you there, God? It's me, Margaret. These are friends for life, definitely. We're gonna be friends when we're old and wrinkly. And then I'll take care of her. We have a dance. Oh yeah, we do have a dance. Stop it, Landon! <laughs> <laughs>this is Margaret, the one I was telling you about. Margaret, this is Janie. Hi, nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. And this is Gretchen. So, you're the fourth. Yeah. You always wonder how kids of this age are gonna be together, and they really enjoy themselves. It just works. The crazy lady. Who <laughs> you? You. <laughs> the whole cast, we were kind of never seen apart the whole time that we were shooting. Let's do this thing! And we always had so much fun just playing and improving. It was just such a special relationship. And keep talking about it, okay? Great, keep improvising. It looks like a thumb. <laughs> Being on set has been the best thing in the world. You can keep me here for ever, and I'll be happy. Wretched puns a book. My dad's anatomy book. It's so saggy. <laughs> Before this movie, I had never really worked with more than one kid on, on a show. It was really fun to just work with people around my own age and just have that kind of energy and excitement on set. We bonded immediately. It was very fun to meet them. We talk all the time. We play games when we're not on set, and it's, it's just a really great environment. <laughs> With all the other girls, we just click. We're, they're so nice. And it really does feel like a little girl group. We all keep each other in check, and we make sure we tell each other if, like, hey, maybe you should try it this way. And then we, like, help each other run through our lines together. Let's try some different reactions. Oh, that's okay. We should, we should go for all of these. Working with the cast has been really fun. 
I've become close with most of the cast. <laughs> it's funny when your whole body gets into it. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. Me and the other kids in the cast, we've been able to hang out outside of set and we've gotten to know each other. And I mean, they're just so fun and so sweet and they're so inclusive. I feel like I've made some lifelong friends. All I care about is that Philip Lebro came. <laughs> He's hilarious. And the boys are also super, super kind. It's funny seeing Zach whenever he is like being mean to Ow. Margaret. It's a pinch to grow an inch. And you know you need that inch. Hey. As soon as they say cut, he's just so, such a nice person. And Sims, he's hilarious. That was like a perfect thing to do. Jacoby or Freddie in the show, he's just so funny. He's the main attraction. Popcorn. Everybody loves popcorn. You pop for corn. <laughs> Jacoby, he plays Freddy. He's an amazing dancer. He's really nice. He can be a goofball at some times. The entire cast is just amazing. Uh, I've made friends with all of them, and we were all staying in one hotel, and there was this one floor, and it was on the 14th floor, and we would all hang out there after hours for hours on end, just messing around with chairs and stuff. We've been chilling, you know, get to know everybody better, you know, I'm making everybody laugh and stuff like that, you know, hang out. We all play ukulele together in the teacher's room, teacher's classroom. It's fun. We made this group chat that's called uh, The Crew, and Jacoby FaceTimes the group chat a lot, and a lot of us are answered most of the time. <laughs> but just let him be the one that's really, really giving that shit. Okay? Okay, great. Yeah. When we have to get down to business, we get down to business. But we're all very close. Everyone fits in. It's perfect. What you guys will see on uh, on camera, what it is. It's like. realistic because like we made friends in real life and it just like yeah. clicked on camera. Landon, who, who plays Evan Wheeler, him and I are supposed to be really good close friends in the movie and it's the same in real life. Just the way that we hang out, we talk to each other and teasing and stuff. It, mm, so our king and of course the fall. bus exercise. And, and the bus exercise. That's of course. I must increase my bus. We must increase our bus. We must <laughs> increase our bus. We must increase our bus. We're we better than the increase. girls. We are way better than the girls. They tried to beat us. They can't beat us. No. The most sweetest thing for me was when we were shooting when Margaret kisses Philip Leroy. You know, and neither one of them had had a kiss before. So their first kiss ever is on camera, which is already like, and I was right next to the two moms. And they're, you know, dying <laughs> watching their kids do this. It was very sweet. And they, you know, they handle it so well. But that was definitely, you know, a big moment in their lives too. I know I shouldn't be enjoying this God, but it's just too good. I'm really excited to film my scene at the end with Margaret, and I, I love that scene because it's so emotional. You think I don't know that all of you make fun of me like it's some kind of game? It's not Do you me. think I want to be the biggest kid in the class? How would you feel if you were to wear a bra in fourth grade and everybody called you names just because of how you looked? I don't know. <sighs> Wait, I really am sorry. We kind of leave their their little moment at the carnival, they're kind of becoming friends. I just think that's really sweet. This is the main dance floor. You know on our hand? Main dance floor, you know? You know, I'm not gonna show off or anything. They all entered as somebody in terms of acting in, in, in a certain place, and they all emerged differently, I think. <laughs> Their dynamic as a group, there was something that, that didn't have to start up when you turn the camera on. There was something going on already. We're all the same age, and we're all going through the same stuff. And even apart from our characters, we're all of the cast, we're just, we're all so similar because we're just all human beings. I'm so excited. It's just like one big, big friend group. So it's just always so fun. Oh my God. I'm really gonna miss them when I leave. I love them all so much. We must, we must, we must increase our bus. We must, we must, we must increase our bus.
For this to be your first feature film, I don't really know how much better it could get than this. It's been such a great experience. I'm gonna miss everyone. Evan! You idiot. <laughs> it's crazy that I'm gonna be part of a movie that's an iconic book. I can't even. But, I mean, everyone on set and the crew and the cast are just so amazing, and I'm so glad and blessed to be here. It's a picture wrap. I asked the question, will it be contemporary or will it be set in 1970 when the book is set? And Kelly and Jim said, absolutely, it's set in 1970 because it has to be. And that's fun. Oh my God, that's so much fun to see. If you're gonna spend some time in the time period, I'd recommend 1970, it's great. A lot of it was just understanding what was going on culturally and feeling like we were really grounding ourselves into the period while at the same time being timeless. We are in the midst of making an authentic memory. Using the references that Judy had in the book are important to people's memory of what this book was. We had a seemingly impossible task, which was both to get the period right, but also to create a world that looked and gave everybody an access point. And that went into everything. I was just a couple years older than Margaret in the story, so I could share with them my memories of growing up in the late 60s, early 70s. I had a whole host of these memories that sort of came bubbling up as we started talking about the movie. Steve was in the unenviable position of turning Charlotte, North Carolina into New York City and New Jersey. And he did it with brilliant detail. The story we were telling was suburban New Jersey in the 70s. And that look owes more to the Eisenhower 50s. We went into deep dives into the better homes and gardens of the time. Those told us what middle class folks were doing. Steve was amazing. He literally would draw these drawings of the set before he built them to show us, and they were works of art. Things that just brought you right back. You start laughing, because it was just like, wow. <laughs> you know, we're in the 1970s in New Jersey. The Simon House was actually the first location in the whole script that Kelly and I talked about. One of the very first sketches I did was a sketch of the house in the way that I would transform it. So we added archways to the front porch, and then we brought in Japanese maples, which tell us the season, so that we could describe a year in the life of this house. You breathe life into the whole character through the space that you're walking into. And the Simon House, we have this bohemian family come in from New York, and all their furniture doesn't fit the scale of the space. Oh, that's great! The house starts out not being Barb's house at all, just an empty shell. And the arc of the movie is tracked with the arc of how Barb reinterprets the main living room, dining room, kitchen of the house. Yes. It's a great opportunity to really dig deep into what Barb's thinking every step of the way. The couch that Barbara's struggling with, that was my grandma's couch. Almost exactly, you know, these things that just take you back. And I think that just fills the whole movie with a lot of heart. Hey, hey, what happened to the couch? It's time to turn over a new leaf. For Margaret, we had decided that she is on a journey to sort of find her place in the world. So how could we put that story into the room we were giving her? We decided that each wall of the room was painted a different color. And the sense was that she is finding her way. She hasn't found her color palette yet. I always felt that her bedroom should be a place of safety, so we added a dormer over her bed so that her bed had this sort of wonderful portal around it. All of the people in the props and set design have put so much care into all of the sets. Each of our four main girls had icons in their rooms as templates for who they wanted to be when they grew up. Gretchen, we only briefly see her bedroom, which is a mess. It's a pigsty. Where are my 
shoes. But on the wall is this clear image of Barbra Streisand, who was already an icon in 1970. Ready? Lean on that. Janie had images of stewardesses from Jet Magazine in her kitchen. Come on. Mom's upstairs. Voila. Nancy's icons were Twiggy, the models who graced the covers of Vogue. She has a teen magazine collage on one side of her room, so she definitely is into boys in that abstract teen magazine way. The pharmacy was the single most challenging thing that we were gonna have to solve in the whole movie. We had a full 360-degree store to create. Okay. Selena filled the aisles with boxes and boxes and boxes I have to give a shout out to Tiffany, our amazing graphic designer. She single-handedly dealt with every single product box that you see on those shelves. Please, God, let it be a lady. Please. Kelly and Jim came in the store, and they just had their jaws on the floor. I'll never forget when we filmed Margaret practicing trying on a maxi pad. It's such a simple but intimate moment that half the population experiences, and yet it felt revolutionary. It felt like, I can't believe we're doing this. Are we allowed to do this? Uh, come in. So Norman's basement is the closest I had in the movie to attribute to something I lived with growing up. So we had to do diagonal walnut paneling, that was for sure. The other thing I remembered were these room dividers that would separate a big space into separate smaller spaces. Selena had found this amazing suite of saloon chairs and couches that were upholstered in quilted patterns. On the table was our vengeance on all the foods we hated as kids. So we absolutely had to have three or four kinds of jello aspect on the table. Norman's basement is perfect. No, it's like I remember going to parties like that. <laughs> the classroom was a lot of fun for the kids and for us. It was our first week of photography. <gasps> Margaret's here. They brought the desk from L.A with the fixed seat and it's got the formica top and it's all very regimented and kids can hide stuff in it. The interior of the classroom was also great because we see it over many months of the school year. On the windows, we had a whole series of seasonal cutout construction paper decor pieces the kids would have made. And that's it, yeah! When I came to the school, I was like, oh my God, this is beautiful. The classroom is so incredible. Pass it on. I really do feel like I'm with, like, schoolgirls and we're in the 70s and having fun. Hey, welcome to the carnival. It's the last day of school, and we've got candy apple stands, we've got ice cream stands, and we've got games galore. We've taken a whole bunch of 1960s sheets and painted them so that it feels like the kids and the parents have actually painted all the signs for this carnival. False advertising. False advertising. I can sue you for that. You do this. In a few minutes, there'll be steam coming out from the steaming hot dogs. And we've got popsicles. We've got cotton candy. Cotton candy. Cotton candy always gets me riled up. You know, it gives me so much energy when I eat it. We've got all the bad foods that we banned from kids eating in this day and age that we could still eat in 1970. These things are delicious. They're so good. You should try some. We have the dance floor bestrewed with maple ribbons and balloons to sort of welcome the graduates for the last day of school. No, I'm dancing with myself. The carnival was so awesome. The cars, bicycles, to everyone's outfits and all the extras. It's just so awesome. <laughs> and this is Selena, our decorator. None of this would happen without Selena and her team. It's her team that's made this all possible. All of the sets have really been so carefully crafted, and it's really amazing. It's like time traveling. One thing about Are You There, God, It's Me, Margaret, 
It is nothing like the slam bang, wowsy 1970 era movies that we may be used to. It is so personal a story, it is so intimate, and it does not stay in the cliche places. I never ever had a thought about setting it modern day. Part of that was because it's really important that when girls and women go to the movies, they understand that this thing that they've gone through, their moms went through and their grandmas went through. And here's this thing that takes place in 1970, and yet it's no different than what you experience today. So for me, the time period, it's important because it connects you through all of history. It's tiring trying so hard all the time, doesn't it? Come on. Still nothing? It's not even like I would need that much. Just something. <laughs> I think I was out in L.A., and my, I had a new, wonderful agent, and she was introducing me all around. But Margaret was off the table, as you all know. And then from the sky <laughs> came this wonderful team of Jim and Kelly, convincing me, the persuasion lunch, we call it. Yes. <laughs> convincing me that we should do Margaret and that they were the perfect team to do Margaret. Well, I couldn't believe we got off the plane and there you were to pick us up from the airport, which I was like, oh my, oh my gosh, gosh. <laughs> we'll be so taken back. I was yeah. like, what world am I in? <laughs> yeah. Sitting down to write, I just imagined 10 million fans being like, don't mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> Pressure, responsibility, yeah. yes. tension, yeah. Overwhelming. Yeah. And yet, what we have here is to me the truest possible version of this book. I'd say to everybody, don't worry, you won't be disappointed. <laughs> if you like the book, it is, it's the movie. Mm. Except it's better. <laughs> <laughs> my, my script is, is wrecked. It's covered in notes yes. and yes. the first five pages are falling out. I had to bobby pin them together. Yeah. Um, oh, with Margaret's bobby pin. Yeah, Margaret. <laughs> I stole some from the hair trailer. <laughs> oh, that's great. You guys put that in a museum. So. Yeah, I should. I have it. I have five different scripts, four books, all with notes in them, all in the top of my closet. Are they signed yeah. by Judy too? I think most of them are, yeah. <laughs> when I went back and reread the book as an adult, I, I related to Barbara, which, you know, when I read it as a kid, I didn't even, I, I, I was sort of oblivious to the parents, yeah. Um, but I related to her and how to balance being a mom and being there in, in all the ways um, and also having your own career mm -hmm. and, and doing the things that feed your own soul. And, Finding that balance is tough. Yeah. Um, and I think that's part of what you portrayed so beautifully and, and what just like, just 
bowled me over on set was I was like, that is the experience. That is that is it, you know? Well, and we were having that experience. We're on set we were, yes, as exactly. mothers going like, are they okay? Yes, yes Okay, exactly. let's shoot this scene, yes. you know? So it was exactly. so... Exactly. Right. <laughs> I wanted to do this for my daughter. Mm. You know, I'm going to be so proud to show her this and to show her that we're making stories like this mm -hmm. and still telling multi-generational stories about women that are also relatable to men and help men understand women. Yeah. Reading books can be a great way for parents and kids to communicate. Movies the same. You see a movie and you want to talk about it. Yeah. You can talk about Margaret and Barbara without saying you. A great what do point. you think about this when Margaret did this? Right. And that might help your child talk. I was Laura Denker. <laughs> when I, yeah, believe it or not, you were I, Laura Denker. I was the tallest. I had these things in fourth and fifth grade. It was, and I was so ashamed of it. I walked, you know, it was, it was really hard. And so when I read that book and I read Laura and, you know, that's who was sort of my hero. I can remember exactly where I was when I started to read it. Like, it was such a resonating experience that it's like the memories, all the little details are indelible. I was 11 and it was just so awkward. And I was also a late bloomer and distraught about it. <laughs> and I was also praying to God for boobs and doing all sorts of stuff trying to get boobs. Um, <laughs> doing the wrong exercise. Doing the wrong exercise, well, well, <laughs> I found out. So all these years, I thought it was, I must woof and must look like this, you know? And then you came up, what I saw, when I saw that, that was the only time I had a total fit. Uh, yeah. I was there that day and I was sitting with Julie and the girls started doing that, and I said to Julie, like, oh. oh my God, <laughs> thank God they're you doing it all wrong. Oh my God. Yeah, thank God. You're going to get wrong. wrong. <laughs> so we had a little session. Yeah, no, we so did. Okay, you have you to demonstrate how, to do how you really do it. I must. I must. <laughs> I must. I really hope that people take away that it's okay to just be yourself. I mean, I think that's the real point of the movie, I think, that it's just about staying true to who you are in this crazy, messy world where that's pretty much all that we can do. And also loving your parents, because that, they're, they're going to be there for you. your parents, yes. right? Yes. They're going to be there for you, yeah. To get out into the theater and yeah. be together with your family watching this, I think could be really special. Yes. I want everybody to do Girls' Night Out. This yeah. is girls' night yes. out. Yeah, Let's yeah. go yes. together. Yeah. I hope people are uplifted by it. I hope they feel seen. Mm -hmm. um, I hope it makes them tell their own stories to each other. Yep. Well, it was after some of the screenings when you'd go in the bathroom. The yeah. women were talking to each other, and it's the most amazing conversations because it was all about their experience, and they're sharing these very yes. intimate things. I yeah. mean, it was really, it yeah. sparked that. Margaret's experiences are things that we can all relate to because they're so timeless. Even though everything's happening to Margaret in the 70s, it's something that I can relate to now. It's something that, that everyone, I think, in this room can relate to because the journey of finding yourself is something that we are all constantly doing, no matter what age you are or where you come from or who you are. We can all identify a piece of ourselves within Margaret.